To get started on your sphere studies, the first one you'll want to do is your monochromatic study. Um, so for that one, you are going to want to have whatever color you've chosen. You only have to draw this particular monochromatic sphere once, so you're welcome to choose any color you want for that. Because I had used blue in a previous demo, I decided to choose red for this one. And so in this one, you're gonna be using a little bit more black and white um, than for these other sphere exercises. And so you're gonna wanna have your black and white Conte um, at your side in addition to that red. And so I'm gonna line those up right here to the side of my paper, and then I have the white one in my hands. Now, before you get started, um, as I mentioned, I have just used a really, really subtle dotted line to divide this large paper, you can't see the whole paper, into six, uh, you know, six squares that I am going to use as sort of a grid as I'm working on these six spheres. And so it's gonna end up being a really interesting composition to have all six studies on this paper together. Um, for the first study, because it's monochromatic and because it's our first one, I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in this upper left-hand corner, and then I'll be working down and to the right um, as I'm filling in all six of these. So to get started, I'm not gonna use pencil at all for this. I'm just using my pastel um, or my Conte, whichever one you have. Uh, but if you are using colored pencils, then obviously um, go ahead and choose the white colored pencil for this to get started on your monochromatic exercise. So I'm going to begin by drawing the sphere with this white. And so what you're gonna notice again is that the white is gonna have a slightly different color than your actual paper, because your paper should be a slightly cooler white and then tonally the white of your Conte might actually be a slightly warmer white. Um, and on the paper it might even appear a little bit yellow as you can see here. Um, now I'm not gonna worry about the shadow right now. The shadow I'm gonna fill in with black that's gonna totally have a little bit of red in it. And so what we're doing in this particular first monochromatic exercise is we're really pulling the value spectrum uh, that we just worked on and we're applying it to this first sphere. And so to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my red now and I notice, oops, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, what, what not to do? when your red Conte breaks. So really delicately wiping it off the paper. Sorry about that. Um, and then you should also have your eraser handy in case you do need to erase a little bit of it. Okay, all right, so crisis averted. I do have this little smaller piece of red now, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that instead of my big red piece. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm looking at the red in terms of where that shadow is and I'm thinking about filling it in that's really going to effectively show that depth and the sort of richness of that red. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be blending that red with both black and white to create that monochromatic composition. And then I can also begin to define that shadow and I'm using the red to draw the shadow because I know that this is going to be a much deeper, kind of darker, richer area in my drawing. Okay, let me blow away a little bit more of that dust from that broken piece. Okay, and I can begin to blend this. Um, 
I'm just using my finger, but you're welcome to use a blending stump if you want. You got one in your supply kit. And notice how as I'm working, there's already naturally this sense of volume and roundness that's happening because of the kind of darker, richer area of red and these areas where I'm blending up um, to create that kind of tonally lighter surface area. And so that's actually just naturally how you create that sense of volume. So um, any highlight is gonna infer that round area that's closest to you, whereas any shadow um, will imply, you know, kind of the area that's rounder that's either further away from you or that's more in shadow. And notice how I'm letting these areas be in part because I want to convey the subtleties of that tonal variation as that round sphere shifts from that really kind of crisp dark edge to that kind of brighter edge. And so I'm working slowly and thinking about crisp lines. I'm actually gonna go back in here and really sharpen up that line along that edge of that sphere because I really want it to be this really crisp edge. Now there might be a moment when you're working with pastels when you don't want to blend it and that's totally fine as well. We will talk about workable fixative and finishing fixative for these pieces um, and for any work that you're working on that's any kind of conte or pastel in general because there will be these moments when you will want to fix your final work and you may not want to blend all of that pastel and even when you blend it, it's still gonna be kind of loose. I have my little wet paper towel to the side here and I'm gonna go ahead and blow this off again. Just being really careful not to blend any of that red because I don't want that to be, you know, kind of permanent on the rest of this paper here. Now I'll add the white first, and I'm really just adding the white for this subtle highlight up at the very top here. So I'm gonna blend that red a little bit more just to kind of give us that tonal sense of things really culminating here up at the very tip top. And I'm not gonna add the white until I've really resolved all of this. So I'm actually gonna erase a little bit around here just because I really want that edge to be nice and crisp as well. Remember, I don't have to worry about the background here.
where I might incorporate that white just for that little highlight. Just right there. That's all you need to create that sense of that highlight. Maybe a little bit around it. But really that white will function on its own. It'll tell us the high point where the light is hitting that straight on. There we go, and then a little more red in there. And then you can see how that undertone of light right there um, shows us that reflection of light from the surrounding area around here that's reflecting up to that back side of the sphere and then to add a little bit of black into it as well just to give us that little extra kick really deep in that red And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get my blending stump out and I'll show you guys in a different video how to use your blending stump along those edges. 